In this video, you will learn how to use Google Meet like a pro. This is the first of two consecutive videos. How to start a meeting. I want to show you about three different ways how to start a meeting. First up, let's just head over to Google Meet, like so. And we see here that there's a blue button, new meeting. If you click on that, a drop down appears and I could create a meeting for later. So if I click on that, what it gives me is the information that I could send out to the people, maybe in an email message. And if they were to click on this link, then they would access the meeting or this is the code, which they could type in here, just, you know, omit the hyphens, or they could also dial in if they wanted to, if they couldn't join with the Google Meet app, either on desktop or on smartphone. So that would be schedule, uh, creating a meeting for later. Then there's start a meeting instantly. If I click on that, I'm automatically brought into a new Google Meet call. And from there, I could add other people that I want to participate. If I click on schedule in Google Calendar, which I'm gonna do right now, you'll see that a new calendar event is created with a new Google Meet link. And I could just simply go ahead and add guests to that if I wanted to. We're going to come to this in a second. I'd like to point out to this here because if you have separate calendar events for that specific day and they contain a link to a Google Meet video conferencing call, then they will be listed here on the right side. And the way I access this is simply by clicking on it. And then I'm brought to this kind of like waiting room where I can check certain things. This is something we'll be covering a bit later in this video. Now I would like to um, focus on this here. Now, if you have a code, so if someone has sent you a meeting link, then I said the latter part um, of the link will be your code, just omit the hyphens and you're good to go. I'd like to show you how to use the nickname. Now, this is something that you can currently only use if you have a Google Workspace account. So if you have a, a free Google account, this won't work. But what I can do here is I could say, I want to create a meeting um, and give it the name of Saparis. So the nickname would be Saparis. Let me go ahead and join this. There you go. And so the meeting nickname now is Saparis and I could join that and there you go. So that's how you could give a meeting a nickname. Maybe you would want to use this for, um, I don't know, for your recurring team meetings, for example. Preview, look and sound. Whenever you want to join a meeting that has been scheduled, you can preview your look and sound. So I'm going to do this right now by clicking on this link and I'm brought to this sort of waiting room where I can check several things. So you see, I could change the background here if I wanted to. If I click on the effects, I see the different effects I have. It's a custom image I add at once. Um, I could feel like I'm in a spaceship or if it might be, it should be a bit more professional. I might just want to blur the background somewhat or do um, a very strong blur. Let's leave it on this here. And um, let's also have a look at, let me just click back here. So I can see my mic is on, my camera is currently on, I'm speaking, it is picking up my audio track. But something I highly recommend is checking your audio and video settings by clicking on that button before you enter the call and capturing and diagnosing. So it's currently loading and now it's make a, making a recording of my video, of my camera and of my mic. And I could play this back here. So then you hear how it would actually sound and it checked everything and everything evaluated to true or evaluated to correct. So everything is working as intended. If I click here on audio and video, here is where I can switch to different devices that I currently have hooked up as a microphone and as speaker. Now this will be different in your case, obviously. Noise cancellation on for our organization, the default is on and I highly recommend you do that too. And here you can, this is a newer feature, adjust the video lighting if you want. If you toggle that on, then Google Meet with, um, you know, artificial intelligence will see is a person maybe uh, too dark, um, not, is there not enough contrast to the background, then it would automatically give you more lighting. So that is something you could definitely check out. The effects we saw before in the preview is just the check I ran before. Once we're happy with all of that, all we have to do is click on join now, and then we enter our call. 
add or remove people. In a call, you can click on show everyone and then on add people. And let's say I wanted to invite Craig. So I click on his name or I could have searched for him there in the search bar and then send email. We also can add people with or form participants by clicking on call and entering a name. Now, depending on the region where you're in, you might not be able or you might be restricted to only adding people from certain regions. And how about removing someone? Very easy, click on the three dots and then on remove from meeting. Admit or deny entry. Now, for people outside of your organization joining call, it's very well possible that they will have to ask for you to accept their joining. And then it would look something like this. Someone wants to join this call. You could deny entry or admit them. Now, this depends very much on the setup that your admin has defined. So mainly this will apply for people outside of your organization, but it might also apply for people within your organization, especially if you flick the switch on the host control, something that I will be showing you afterwards. So the way I would accept Adam joining is simply by clicking here on admit and then he's part of our call. Meeting controls. Let's start at the very left. This is the meeting name. So this is the code that anyone could enter to join a set. They can omit the hyphens. Then we have our mic and our camera control. You see in this case, it's turned off. So that's where you would turn it on and off. This is where you, you can raise your hand. So we see Adam has raised his hand. So he's clicked on this. And that's why um, you see that someone has a question. If you click on open queue, then you see who has the question. If he's answered, then you can click on, or if I've answered his question, I can click on lower. Um, it's currently also so that with artificial intelligence, that once someone clicks on raise hand, unmutes himself, states whatever they want to say, that afterwards they in their Google Meet will see, hey, we think it's time to lower your hand so that they can do that themselves. But you as a meeting host can also lower their hand if you've answered their question. Now, um, here's where we would share our per present our screen. We'll have more on that a bit later on the three options you have there. Here we have our more options. Uh, whiteboard, this is something that we will be look on, looking at a little bit later. So the only thing I would like to mention is full screen. So this is to have your Google Meet window in full screen modes, apply visual effects. Obviously, this is the same thing we had already before we entered the call. So also during the call, you can go ahead and change your screen. Then captions, we will also be demonstrating later on. Here, use a phone for audio. This is when you want to um, hear and speak through your phone while still being, let's say, on your computer in the Google Meet call. So seeing in on your desktop, but speaking through your phone and uh, troubleshooting and help and exactly settings. That's the last thing I want to talk upon uh, or touch upon this again are the settings. Here's where you could change the mic you're talking into, uh, test your speakers, um, change the video. This is if you have several cameras connected to your computer, this is where you could do or change these settings when you're in the call. All of the other settings here, we will be touching on in the second video that I will be creating here very obvious. This is where you would leave the call or with the new host controls. That is, if you are the host of the call, you could end the call for everyone. Then over here, we have our meeting details. So you could copy this, paste it in an email and send it to anyone. The show everyone were, if there were a lot of people, we could even search from here. We add new people, we mute them and so on and so forth. Our chat, uh, be mindful of this, that whenever you leave a call, you will lose the chat content here. And then the activities, um, again, this is something we will look down um, in this and in the next video and the host controls the same things. This you only see if you're an organizer. Um, so in this case, Adam will not see this, but Jane will see this because she's the organizer and she can change certain settings here. Change layout. Here we see that there's currently three people in the call. And if I want to change my tiles, maybe I'm just going to click on that. Maybe I want to pin myself to the main screen. I'm going to undo that. I could just as well pin someone else if I wanted to, or maybe I want to remove my own tile because I don't want to see myself like so. 
let me go ahead and add that again. Or something I've been using lately a lot is minimize myself, just because a lot of people find it troubling to see themselves while they're talking in a video conference call. So that's how you could do away with yourself kind of like so. So others still will see you, but you won't see yourself. If you wanna see your own video image, then you can just go ahead and click on expand. Now down here, we have our three dots for more options. And then let's click on change layout. Now I personally always work with the tiled layout, but you might wanna have the spotlight where someone specific is in the spotlight or the sidebar like so. Um, I said I like tiled. Uh, the more people you need, probably the more tiles, the maximum tiles you have to increase here. Currently that maximum is 41. So you would see 41 tiles on one screen if there were so many participants. Captions. Captions make what you're speaking visible and you can turn them on by clicking on the three dots and then captions. Now for every location, English captions are available. But depending on your location, you might see other available languages. These are the ones that we currently have. Let's turn on the English captions and obviously our mic has to be on. Testing captions in English. ¿Te puedo preguntar algo? Hast du noch weitere Fragen? Didn't get that 100%, but it's actually not that bad. And Google is working on live captions, live translating captions. So I could be speaking in English and the captions would be displayed in Spanish. So that is an upcoming feature. Please note that if you record a meeting, captions will not be recorded, meaning that when someone watches that playback or that recording, they will not see the captions that you saw in the live video conferencing call. Chat. Chat messages are visible to everyone in the call, meaning there are no private messages. Now, you do not see any messages that have been sent prior to your joining the call. And obviously you'll also miss out on any messages sent after you've left the call. Now, if I wanted to answer a message, I click on this here, or if I wanted to send out one um, from the beginning on, and um, here is the link. It's a great way to share resources because you can send around clickable links. Now, um, something to be aware of is if a call is being recorded, then the content of the chat is also being logged out and will be accessible to the host of that specific um, of that specific meeting. Now you see this here. Let everyone send messages. Uh, I can't. I can't flick the switch. Why not? Well, if you want to find out how you can prevent other people from sending chat messages during a call, that is, if you're our host, then make sure to watch part two of this video that we will be launching on this um, Saparis YouTube channel. I suggest you hit the subscribe button below so that you don't miss out on part two of this video, nor on any of the other video tutorials that we publish because we share our knowledge about Google Workspace and about Google Apps Script and I want you to benefit from that.